everybody, I'm Trisha Hirschberger from SourceFed Nerd, and I did a walkthrough with some people from CEA who showed me Eureka Park. Now, this is the part of CES 2014 that shows us the startup companies. These are the people that really want it so bad they can taste it. This is the newest tech that there is trying to get funding so that it can make it to you. Let's check out what they have to offer. Hey, everybody, I'm here at Eureka Park with Shafa, who's CEO of Tarsier. How are you doing today? Oh, not too bad. Excellent. Tell everybody at home uh, what you guys are doing here at Eureka Park. We're actually developing a set of eyewear called MoveEye allows you to interact with your TV using hand gestures from your own perspective. So you can just kind of reach out and point at a, an icon you want to interact with and it'll just launch that, that uh, application. So we think this is really powerful for, for creating a more immersive and natural way of interaction in comparison to some of the other gesture technologies available today. Awesome. And I know when we were talking a little bit before, you were saying that really from any angle, from distances pretty far away, this still works? Yeah, it's actually, it really takes your perspective into, into account. So you, okay. can, you can be at any angle from the mm -hmm. screen, you can be uh, far away, and it really knows exactly where you want to interact with. It doesn't really matter if you're in front of it or not. Our algorithms can actually reproduce the, the information that's necessary to target the gestures without the need to be in front of the screen. So I think a lot of people would probably look at MoveEye and think, oh, it's some type of gaming application, but that's not really what you're intending it for. No, we think this is so natural and it's so similar to the way that we interact with our tablets that it's really ideal for interacting with our smart TVs. We all know that not? interacting with the smart TVs are you know, very difficult. The keyboard and mouse really has no business in the living room and, uh, and you know, the remote control is, is, is not designed for this kind of web 2.0 level of content. So, right. so we think this is kind of a very natural way of, of interacting with your TV. Excellent. Now tell me a little bit about the tech that's here in MoveEye. Um, so, Mubai uh, has a pair of stereo webcams mm -hmm. um, and actually a, uh, a wireless chip and a, a processor to, to process the information. Okay. So it actually sends that information to the, to the media box. On the media box, we actually determine the gesture that you're trying to use. Now, how did you come up with this? Um, well, we knew that there was going to be an issue with uh, with interacting with TVs. We knew that, that people are going to want to kind of serve content up mm -hmm. on the biggest screen in their house, and that's still called the TV, so sure. uh, you want to interact with it in a, in a powerful way like we do on our computers, right. but still you want to be able to, to kind of relax and, and kind of enjoy the content as well. So we think that this has power for interacting in, in both 2D and 3D. Okay, so what's the next step for MoveEye? Well, the next step is to kind of continue down the line of, of development. So we mm -hmm. want to kind of get this into a more robust form so, okay. so that we can demonstrate to, to a potential partner that this is ready to go to market within a year. All right. Well, we hope to be able to see this and get to use it in our living room soon. Thank you so very much and good luck here at Eureka Park. Thank you. Hey, guys. I'm here with Colton from Virtuix. How are you doing today, Colton? Doing great. We're here at CES. We're having a great time. Excellent. So uh, tell everybody at home what we're standing in front of right now. Sure. What you're seeing is the Virtuix Omni. It's one of the first virtual reality interfaces. It allows you to walk, run, sidestep, walk backwards yeah. in place, and have your movements tracked and put into any PC game. So you're really in the game. As you can see here, he's mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah, so I mean a lot of people here at CES 2014 have tried to build on Oculus Rift. How can we add to it? How can we really give you a fully immersive virtual reality experience? And we've seen a lot of different people giving different ways for us to do that. Why is Virtuix figured it out? Why have you guys figured it out? So you hit right on the, hit the nail on the head. Really? Yeah. Full virtual reality can be experienced in now. Mm -hmm. Virtual reality needs to incorporate the whole body. Okay. So that's what we're, the problem that we're solving is yeah. motion. How do you walk around the virtual world while sure. actually not walking around your living room and hitting your furniture? Right. And so that's how you're able to do it on the Omni. Now, this looks pretty awesome. I mean, he seems to just be gliding along the bottom. Tell me a little bit about the technology that's involved in this. Sure, so it's all about the simplicity. Okay. Really, what he's standing in is a frictionless surface. Sure. He's wearing shoes with some type of material on the bottom. Okay. So really, all he has to do is slide back. And then we're doing motion tracking via capacitive tracking built into the base. Built into the base. Okay, so it's on the base. It's not in his waist at exactly. all. Exactly. The waist is all for safety and support. Mm -hmm. Because again, you're standing on a frictionless surface. Right. You want to make sure you're nice and safe. Especially mm -hmm. when you're in goggles, you're blindfolded pretty much. Right. As well as you're in a virtual world where right. something's coming at you. So safety is also very important. And with a lot of the fully immersive VR that we're seeing now, the games have to be specially designed for this. What type of games is this compatible with? Well, that's what's great. We're very backwards compatible. We can play any type of PC game. So you can any PC any game? Any PC game. As long as it uses a keyboard for movement control or okay. can handle a gamepad, okay. you can play using our system. That's amazing. So where do you guys see this going next? What's your next step? So really, right now, we're trying to get into the home. Okay. So it's a consumer product. It's meant for the video gamer at home. But there's tons of other applications, for example, uh, not only the military, but virtual architecture, sure. virtual tourism, yeah. and really home fitness as well. Excellent. Yeah, this is absolutely wonderful for the gamer that wants to get more in shape, wants to be more active. Now, you say you envision this for the home. I'm taking a look at this, and I'm thinking I'll never be able to afford that. Um, how much do you see this running for the average consumer? So right now, it's $499. $499. 
That's not bad. Yeah, so that's the whole idea is that we want it to be, again, a consumer product that's ready to be in your home. And so for the average gamer, that's kind of price point. And this is really for the average PC gamer at this point, not necessarily consoles. Is that correct? Again, we're going to be looking to adding console support in the future. Okay. But for now, with all the head mounted displays that are coming out, sure. they're PC based. Okay. So we're going to be PC based for now. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. There is so much cool stuff here. My brain's about to explode. Uh, right behind me is Dry Tunes. This is a wireless, waterproof speaker that can also store your devices, and you can control it with magnets while it's underwater. That's in a fish tank. Come on. We've got futuristic musical instruments over here. What the heck is this? This is the Dualo Do Touch. It's a new musical instrument that are very easy to handle, very easy to put in your hands, and uh, you can compose and learn the music very fast and very easily because we visualize all the music theory by very, very simple shapes. Nice! And do you feel really cool when you're playing it? Like, does it make you want to jam out? Yeah, you can jam out, you can compose, and once you have composed your own sound, yeah. you can share it on our sharing platform, and you'll be able to download it from my profile, okay. upload it to your own instrument, and if you want to uh, learn each of the tracks, you just have to follow the light as a video game. Awesome! And, and about how many sounds are in this? More than 100 sounds, and if you don't like the sounds that are inside, you can create your own sound banks, record, okay. your, record your dog, and put the, the sound of your dog in your instrument. So your dog can sing with your musical yeah. instrument. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, you heard it here, your dog can sing. That's a Duallo Do Touch. This is really awesome. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm here with Hedara at Flexi. This is a new way to type on your Android phone, your iPhone, or your smartwatch even. Isn't that correct? That's right, even on tablet. But it's Flexi app, and uh, we are a very forgiving keyboard. Okay. Originally, it was designed for the blind users, and then we took it to mass market. So you can mm. type any word and be totally inaccurate, and we still understand what you meant to say. So one of the the ways I like to show it is uh -huh. trying to type a word without looking at the screen. OK, don't look. You can't look at it. So I was looking at you, very uh -huh. beautiful eyes. And this is what I came up with. This is what I came up with. It says Gurko. Gurko. I was going for hello. So OK. if I would swipe to the right, usually it would give awesome. me the right correction. And also it would give me other alternatives. OK. So instead of deleting a word and retyping it, if I actually meant to say cello and not hello, I can swipe down between these corrections and it would change the word instead of me having to do it. It's better typing, faster typing. So this is the same keyboard that we just saw and I'm going to type a word. And it fits pretty well. I mean, it's with a smartwatch, you're always concerned is that the keyboard takes up the entire screen or that's there's right. simply no way to respond. That's right. So that's the idea. That's what we were going for. We're trying okay. to bring a better experience in typing uh, without you being annoyed and without you being too having to be totally focused on the screen. Now, in your opinion, what makes Flexi one step above Swipe or Swift Key or some of the other keyboards that are out there? The other keyboards have a learning curve. They're they very do. good, but I'm not, I didn't feel that it's intuitive to swipe between letters. It's something that you need to learn. Flexi has uh, the familiar keyboard layout that you already use. It's nothing that you have to learn. And even if it is, you have a 30-day trial, uh, so right. you can take the time to learn it and get used to it and see if it's for you or not. Thank you so much for being here at Eureka Thank Park. You. This is an awesome product to show Thank off. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, guys. What's up? I'm here with Marcel from Pinono, the makers of the panoramic ball camera. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Great. Thank you. So your product is a ball that has 36 different cameras in it, correct? Exactly. And what does that do for people? We use the 36 cameras to okay. assemble a full spherical panorama. So okay. you throw the ball up in the air. Throw it up in the air. At the highest point, all cameras fire at once. Awesome. And so we basically freeze that moment in time that was around you and okay. assemble a full spherical panorama out of it, which you can view in full detail later. And can you view that on um, iOS or Android? Exactly. Or so Apple there's already system? applications okay. out on the App Store for iOS and Android, and Windows Phone is in development right now. So the application works as follows, that this is basically a window into the panorama that you shot. So you move around and then you can see that part of the world that you shot with the camera at that moment of time. Now what kind of sensor technology is built into the panoramic ball camera so that it knows when it's at the highest point? Well, there's an accelerometer inside okay. and so how we do it is we basically measure the speed with which you throw the camera. Okay. So we calculate then where the highest point will be and then sure. can write into the registers of the camera at that point in time trigger. Awesome. Now if people are throwing this camera really, really high in the air and it's
it's a relatively expensive piece of equipment. Yeah. How much impact can it take? It's built to withstand drops from 30 feet to concrete floor. Okay, to concrete uh, floor. Yeah. Because a throwable camera should also be a droppable camera. And Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many other cameras out there you can drop from 30 feet on a concrete and they'll be a-okay. You guys got your start on Indiegogo? Exactly. We made a crowdfunding campaign. It's still running until Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we are already funded. We raised about $1.1 million so far. Congratulations. And thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we're very excited about that. Um, so yeah, we, now we can build it. Um, and ship the first units in September and um, this is going to be really exciting for all of us. And that's exciting. So when you're talking about uh, pre-orders versus final production, what cost range are you looking at? So right now on Indiegogo it's $500 and the campaign is running two more days and after in retail it will be $600. So uh, this is a special de deal for our backers since they enable us to actually build the camera. So if you want to be an early adopter you should get in within the next two days. Excellent. Yeah, I have to say uh, the tech in the camera itself is really cool but the application and how to view it is really awesome as well. Yeah. Well done. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. We just saw so many cool things here at Eureka Park. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite places to come in CES every year to see what's coming next or to see what maybe isn't coming next because nobody likes it. But maybe it was a great idea and they'll redo it again. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks so much to CEA for having us. And uh, we're going to go check out some more stuff. So we'll see you soon. I'm Trisha Hirschberger.